and welcome to 3Q, where I interview industry professionals for just 15 minutes by asking three powerful questions. I'm your host, Rachel Vogel, and joining me on tonight's episode is Jenna Lamonico, head of U.S. marketing for 1RPM. Jenna is a digital marketing expert who's used her love of music and knowledge in the social media space to help break up-and-coming artists for over 17 years. After studying audio production and working at a recording studio straight out of college, she started her career in PR at Girly Action in 2005. In 2007, she began working for Glass Note Records as the head of new media. It was there that she blossomed her skills helping break artists like Mumford & Sons, Phoenix, and Childish Gambino. After five years at Glass Note, she left to join the new label services branch at Cobalt. As Island Records was relaunched as a solo label after separating from Def Jam, Jenna joined the Island team to run the digital marketing department. It was there that she began to work with a newly signed artist, Sean Mendez. Using her social media knowledge, she helped create a social media strategy to help grow his social following into the multi-millions. She also led digital marketing efforts for artists like Jesse Reyes, Nick Jonas, The Killers, Elton John, Bon Jovi, Tovlo, Fall Out Boy, and Demi Lovato. Just a few years ago, she joined 1RPM to lead the U.S. marketing team, and since then, she's doubled their marketing staff and launched brand new services, including digital strategy, brand partnerships, and sync. She also oversees all of the company's events, as well as the global marketing team. Jenna, thank you so much for being here. It's an honor to have you on the podcast. How are you? Thank you so much for having me. I'm really, really honored to be here. Well, I'm excited to get started. Are you ready for the first question? Yeah. Imagine for a second you're sitting down with your 25-year-old self. What one piece of advice would you give her on a personal note? And what one piece of advice would you give her from a business perspective? Okay, so I think that my answer works kind of on a professional level and also in a personal level as well. And that is trust your worth and trust your work. You know, I am somebody who... I don't think that there was an expectation that I was going to do great things. I didn't do well in school and I kind of struggled with that kind of stuff. And so, but I was really passionate about music and I I knew that that was something I had to be a part of. And so I just worked really, really hard and, you know, I've gotten where I am because of that. And I think that I wish I would have had more um, confidence in the fact that like I worked really hard and I was really passionate and that was enough. I think that I was so high strung and so anxious all the time that my work wasn't good enough. My passion wasn't good enough. Um, the time that I put in wouldn't pay off. And um, I think that it's okay to be proud of your work and feel confident in it. And just know that if you stay consistent and you stay steady, that great things will come from that. Um, And so I wouldn't take back the hard work that I did at all. I'm very proud of that. But I just think I wish I wouldn't have been so anxious and would have enjoyed it a little bit more. As you're younger too, it's harder to believe this, but I feel like at the end of the day, you're the only one that has to be like proud of the work that you do. So as long as you're happy with it, it's exactly. That plays into your personal life too, because I think that, you know, when you don't have that faith in yourself, um, that you have talent and worth, I think uh, you, you let yourself get taken advantage of in a lot of different ways as well. And so, you know, I just think that kind of in having that thought at that time to think with yourself and say, like, I'm doing the best I can and the best work I can and I'm being the best person I am I can be and that will all lead to really exciting things and also don't stand for anything that that doesn't reflect that so you actually studied audio production and worked at a recording studio earlier in your career so was production something that was like your first love of the business is that what you ultimately saw yourself doing how did you get into the label side of things so when I was um in college I started just doing a business degree and I knew I wanted to work in music but I didn't know anything about the music industry I didn't know anybody that works in the music industry I just knew I wanted to be a part of it and I kept getting these ads for audio school and I just loved you know I just like loved music so much. I was like, this can be the thing that I was going to do. And I did really, really well in audio school, actually. But 
I wasn't a musician. And so when I started um, working in a studio, it was hard to say like, oh, play an instrument this way or sing this way when I wasn't a musician myself, you know? Um, And so I started audio engineering. Uh, I mean, I'm sorry, I started uh, being studio manager actually and working on the business side of things. And ultimately I ended that job and I went and I started in PR. That's really cool. Yeah. So then how'd you make the jump from VR to now you're like more on the digital side? (laughs) That was honestly like a a weird natural evolution. So um, I I worked in when I worked in PR, I actually did um, digital PR, which was like the less cool version of PR back in the day. Like that's when it was like the cool publicist did prints and the like nerdy publicist did digital PR. And then from there, I started doing new media, which is now digital strategy, but that's what it was called then when you would run people's MySpace pages and work with blogs and things like that. Um, And then I continued that path for quite a while. And then I was at Island for over five years. And when I left there, I really, I, I knew that I wanted to do something different, but I never I didn't really know what it was that I wanted to do. And when I got offered this job to be the head of marketing, I was like, oh my God, can I do that? And, you know, it's been like a really natural progression for me and I really enjoy it. And I feel like that's, that's what brings me back to the whole, like, trust, trust your worth and trust the work that you do. Because if you would have asked me three years ago, if I could handle the things that I handle now, I would have been like, absolutely not. But you just do it because you have to, right? It's like anything in life. It's like you get in a situation and you either crumble or you rise to the occasion. And so it's been a really, really great experience for me. That's really great. Imposter syndrome is real, but you can get through it. Oh, yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, yeah. All right. Next question. Every industry has its dirty little secrets. And you and I both know that's no different in the music industry. Sometimes people think that's a bad thing, but that's not always the case. Sometimes they can be good. So what's one secret you would like to share with our listeners about the industry? Yeah. So I've worked in different levels of the music industry, meaning I've worked at indies, I've worked at majors, and now I'm at what's referred to as a distributor, but we consider ourselves more than that, but that's another conversation. So the the thing is, is you often think that you have to work with that top 1% of artists, right? And the only way that you can be successful, that an artist can be successful is if you are selling out Madison Square Garden and top 10 on radio and the superstars, right? And I will tell you, it's very, very fun to work with those artists. And I've gotten, I'm very blessed to have worked with some really huge artists. But what I have really learned over the past few years is there's something really special about artists that are able to live their life and have a career doing what they love, right? And if they can make enough money to live a happy life and to continue doing what they love and take care of their family and do that forever, that's really special. And that's really important. And I think there's a lot of music out there that, you know, isn't a household name, but means a lot to a lot of people, right? And I think it's overlooked how special it is to be able to work with those artists, to be those artists. Um, It's not just about having a hit. It's not just about, you know, being, you know, a pop star. It's, It's about why we all started doing this, right? Is to work with music that changes people's lives. And I think that that's a real honor and something very few people talk about, but I talk a lot about because it's something I'm really, really proud of. All right. Final question. Throughout your career, I can only imagine you've been asked plenty of questions, whether it was for an industry conference, the media, or even a promotion. But throughout all those interviews and all those questions, there has to be one that you've never been asked, but would have liked to. So what is that question and what would be your answer? Yeah. So I think that there's a lot of conversations around mental health for in the music industry when it pertains to artists, right? And it's always how do we protect these artists' mental health and how do we give them a um, healthy work balance and not, you know, put this ginormous pressure on them. And I think that's a really, really important piece of conversation. 
What we don't talk about is mental health for the people behind the scenes, the people at the labels that are working until one o'clock in the morning and answering emails on Christmas and, you know, working on vacation. And it's something that we really don't discuss enough. And I'm going to give a shout out to Nick Malley, who started the Jump Global Conference. And he started this conversation just recently, but I, I don't understand why it's something that we don't talk about enough um, because, you know, we work in this business, you know, something I know that's been talked about a lot is that like, there are really good people in this business. And I think that it's always assumes that people that work in the in music industry are like these like sne- sneaky, slimy people. And there are some, um, but the majority of people are just like, good humans who really are passionate about working with music and working with artists. And we give our lives to this business. We give our souls to it. And um, it's so important to be able to do what you love, but also not make yourself sick. Right. I've had a lot of jobs where I've worked myself into the ground and um, you know, how do we do this thing that we love in a way that's really healthy? Um, and, and how do we start having that conversation more? Because I think that I know, you know, I've been working in music almost 20 years now and it's always been like, never stop and like no show, no weakness and like come to work sick. And there's no reason to ever not come to work. And I've worked, I've worked with pneumonia. I've worked from the hospital when my dad had cancer. Like, you know, I've worked through it all. And like, that was what was expected of you. And I think that now there's this, the the Gen Z, like I respect so much that they're like, no, like I'm, I'm going to like shut off now and I'm not going to, you know, give every single piece of myself. And I think that's important. And so like, how do we do it in a way that is, we're still you know, working as hard as humanly can for our artists and making their dreams come true while also not making ourselves sick. What are some of the ways, and maybe it's evolved over time, but you have been able to prioritize your well-being? Well, first of all, um, I try to lead my team with a mental health first attitude, right? And so I always tell people like, if you wake up one day and you just like can't, right? Like you're just having like a super depressed day, that's the same as calling and saying like you have the stomach flu. Right. And so like, it's okay to take a day if you just need to focus on yourself. And I try to lead by example and like to take days when I am not well and just say like, I I need to focus on my health. Um, And then I think it's a balance of, you know, what I, (laughs) what has to get done today And what can you do tomorrow and everything will be totally fine, right? Because it's very easy to just work and work and work and never stop. But there's some stuff that like could be done tomorrow and it's not going to hurt anybody, right? And and teaching myself that that's okay. Um, Because there was, you know, before COVID, I would be at the office until 1 a.m. like very, very often. And it's important to like shut the computer down and be like, okay, I'm going to go for a walk or I'm going to go out to dinner with my friends and, um try to find peace for yourself because you are a better employee and you're better at your job when, when you're healthy and able to be passionate and not just cranking it out. 100%. All right. Well, we've reached the end of the episode, but Jenna, thanks again for joining me. It's been a pleasure to have you on the podcast. Thank you so much. This is so wonderful. And to everybody listening, hope you enjoyed tonight's episode. Stay tuned for next week of 3Q, where I interview industry professionals for just 15 minutes by asking three powerful questions. See you next time.